Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to easily turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a Plex Media Server. Now, this is great for in-home streaming to your other devices like your Amazon Fire TV, your Nvidia Shield, your Android tablets, your Xbox, basically anything that supports Plex will be able to stream from your Raspberry Pi 4 once it's set up correctly. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that this is not a high-end media server by any means whatsoever. I've had really good luck with a single 4K stream two 1080p streams at the same time, or three 720p streams at the same time. But if you're looking to serve like five devices at the same time, I would definitely get something a little more powerful. But I do think this is a great start for getting into a Plex server because of the price of the Pi, the energy efficiency, and the overall usability of this single board computer. Now before we get into the software, there are a few things you're going to need. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 4. I would recommend the 4GB model. You can go up to the 8 if you need to, but it's really not going to help out with video playback. I'd say 4 is where it's at. You'll also need a micro SD card to run the operating system from. I'm just using a Samsung 32 gigabyte card because we're actually going to be using Ubuntu 20.10 to get this up and running. If you're looking for something to store a lot of media on, I would recommend a powered external hard drive. I was able to pick this up on Black Friday for $86. It's an 8 terabyte Seagate. But if you just want to get into this cheap to see how it works out for you, Use a USB 3.0 thumb drive. This is a silicon power 128 gigabyte USB drive, and that's actually what I'm going to be using for this video. But like I mentioned, if you want to add a ton of media, I would recommend getting an external hard drive. Now, you could always store everything on the SD card, but personally, I like having a thumb drive here. That way, I can transfer it easily from my other machines. Now, I'm going to leave a few links in the description. You can actually pick up everything from Amazon. The next thing you'll need is a power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4, 5 volts, 3 amps, USB Type-C. You'll also need a full-size HDMI to micro HDMI cable because this is not a headless setup that we're running here. And finally, I would recommend a little bit of cooling for the Raspberry Pi. This is one of my favorite little accessories. It's an $8 fan that you can get on Amazon. Plug it right into the GPIO pins. And even with the 2.1 GHz overclock, this Pi can run all day long and not overheat with this fan on it. But you could get by without using any cooling on the Pi itself if you really needed to. So now that we've went over all the hardware we need, it's time to go over the software. And in order to get the software installed to the micro SD card, which is going to be Ubuntu 20.10, you will need a Windows, Linux, or a Mac OS machine. We need to flash this micro SD card with the operating system so we can get it up and running on the Raspberry Pi. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so before we get started flashing anything to an SD card for the Raspberry Pi, we need to set up our drive that we're going to be streaming from. This is where we're going to add our videos. Like you saw, I'm using that 128 gigabyte USB drive, but I highly recommend using a hard drive. So on my desktop here, I have some videos. I just got a few royalty-free videos here to test out, but you can add basically anything you want to Plex. Now over here, I have my USB drive. It is formatted NTFS. Go to properties here. This is the format I use. All I'm gonna do is drag my videos folder right over to the USB drive. If you have photos you wanna view, make a photo folder. If you have music, make a music folder. We're going to let this transfer over, and once this is done, our drive is ready to go. Then, we need to flash the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so if you're ready to get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is download our operating system, and for this, we're actually just going to be using the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to download the Windows version, but it also works for Mac and Ubuntu. Once this is downloaded, we're going to go ahead and install it. and we can run it. All right, so from within the Raspberry Pi Imager, we're gonna choose OS, and from here, we're gonna to go to Other General Purpose. Ubuntu. We wanna make sure we choose the correct download. Now, there's a few to choose from here, but I'm actually going with 20.10, Raspberry Pi 4 or the Pi 400. It's 1.6 gigabytes. Now, that's gonna download and flash to our card, but we need to choose the card to flash to. So we'll choose SD. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card inserted into my PC with a generic USB card reader. And we're just gonna choose right. We're gonna lose all the data on that SD card. That's totally fine. It's gonna download that operating system and flash it to the SD card for us. Once this is done, we can actually take this out of the PC, move over to the Raspberry Pi 4. So now that our SD card is finished flashing, 
we can remove it from the PC. We're going to move over to the Raspberry Pi. And don't forget to grab the drive that you placed your photos, videos, and music on. But if you really want to use this as an in-home Plex server, I would highly recommend scaling this up with something like that hard drive you saw. Okay, so now it's time to get everything hooked up. I have my Raspberry Pi 4 here with that simple fan, got a keyboard and mouse plugged in, and that SD card that we just flashed with Ubuntu. Make sure my monitor's on here, got HDMI plugged in, and we're just going to power it up. Now booting up Ubuntu for the first time can take a little while, and it will give us a walkthrough on setting this up. We'll have to choose our language, our region, create a password, a username, and connect online either with Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But personally, I would prefer using Ethernet with a little server like this. Alright, so we're almost ready to start the setup here. Like I mentioned, it's a walkthrough. Just read through it, you will be able to set this up with no problem at all. Once you're finished with the setup, it's going to automatically reboot. And what I'm going to do here is just plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at this screen. So after the initial setup, it's still going to ask us a few questions. We can connect with our online accounts. I'm going to go ahead and skip this. I don't want to send any system information. This is all really personal preference. I leave location services off. But this is where we really want to take a look. First option here, Plex Media Server. This is exactly what we want. So we're going to choose this. It's going to open up the App Store for us. And we're just going to choose Install. Now if that doesn't show up for you, or you accidentally skipped it, we can always find the Ubuntu software from here. Right at the top, Ubuntu software. But mine showed up for me, so I'm just going to exit out of here. And we're going to go ahead and install the Plex Media Server. I have to enter our password that we created when we initially set up the unit. And we now have the Plex Media Server installed. I'm going to go ahead and close down Ubuntu software. And we're almost ready to set up Plex. If we go down to our application menu here, we can bring this up, type in Plex here. I personally like adding this to my favorite, so I right click, add to favorites, and now it's going to be over here on the left hand side. So before we get started with Plex, we need to create an account or sign into your account. Firefox is pre-installed right out of the box with Ubuntu 20.10. We're going to open this up and head over to the Plex website. If you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up here. It's free to use. There is a premium version, but we're just basing this on the free version. So make sure you have a Plex account ready to go. Once we have our Plex account created, we're going to launch the Plex server. I'm going to full screen this. And this is actually going to give us a nice little walkthrough on how to set up our server. I recommend reading everything that comes up on screen for you. I'm going to choose Got It. If you want to subscribe for Plex Pass, you can, but like I mentioned, we're actually just going to be using the free version. So I'm going to close that down. Now, I'm going to give my server a name. I'm just going to call this Pi4. Allow me to access my media outside of my home. Make sure that's checked. Choose Next. Now we need to add a library. And that's where that USB drive or hard drive comes in that we created. Let's go ahead and plug it into the Raspberry Pi now. I recommend using a USB 3.0 port on the Pi. Make sure your Raspberry Pi detects it. As you see, it came up there. We're going to add a library. And from here, you can choose movies, TV show, music, photos, other videos. I'm going to go with movies. So we'll choose movies. And I'm just going to leave the name as movies. Choose next. Now I'm going to browse for that media folder. So we'll choose browse for media folder. From here, we're going to go to media. The name you used when you initially set up Ubuntu. And we'll find that drive right here. 128 gigabyte USB. Videos is the folder that I want to use because this is going to be my movies folder and I'll choose add. Once you have that set up, make sure you choose add library one more time at the bottom of the window. And that's going to add this specific library to our Plex server that we just set up, which was movies. If you want to add your music, do the same thing. Add library, music, photos, other videos, things like that. Go ahead and add everything you want now. You can always come back to this and do it later. So I've got my movie section created. We also have advanced options and when you first start out with Plex, I recommend just leaving everything like it comes right out of the box. You can go ahead and read through this. If there's something important you need to check, you can do it. But I find that it works just fine without messing around with any of this. 
We're going to close this down. We'll choose Next. Done. So this is Plex. These are not the movies that I added. These are movies that you can watch through Plex for free. Now what I want to do is go to More. And as you can see, this is my server, my Pi 4 server that I just created. We're only going to have one section in here called Movies because that's the only thing I set up so far. We'll choose this. And now we need to sign in to claim this server. That's why we created an account. So I'm going to sign in here. And once we've signed in, we've claimed that server. So if I go up here to Pi 4, I'm going to claim it now and it's going to load up those videos I have. So these are the four videos that I have on my Plex server right now, and I can stream these to any other device as long as I'm signed into the same Plex account. Now that server is associated with my Plex account. So if I sign in with my iOS device, my Android device, my Windows, or another Linux machine, an Android TV, anything like that, I can access that server as long as the Raspberry Pi is online. So I'm going to leave this running and I'm going to move over to my Android tablet and show you that I can connect to this and stream the videos that we've added to that USB drive to any device in my house. All right, so here we are with my Android tablet. I've got Plex installed. It just downloaded from the Google Play Store. I've signed in with the same exact account that I'm using on my Raspberry Pi 4 and it's automatically going to show up here. As you can see, I got those same four videos over here. We'll just hit play on Big Buck Bunny. And since I don't have the Plex pass here, it's going to bug me a little bit but it's still totally usable without Plex Pass. With my personal account, I do have a Plex Pass and I totally think it's worth it. I use it a lot on my main TVs around the house. But I'm streaming from the Raspberry Pi to this tablet here. And like I mentioned, this works with Windows, it works with Linux, Mac OS. Plex is available for a ton of different devices. So we'll stop this one. I'll go back to my library and we'll just stream one more real quick. We'll just go with this Samsung demo video here. There we have it. I've actually had really good luck using the Raspberry Pi 4 as a little Plex server for the house. Now, I wouldn't recommend more than two streams at a time on something like this, but it does work, especially if you're doing 1080p videos. 4K is possible, but it does take a little longer to buffer. And if you're doing 4K content, I would recommend one stream from the Pi at a time on 4K. But if you're doing 1080p, two streams, 720p, you can do three streams. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi 4 does work out quite well as a basic Plex server. Um, I was actually really surprised at the performance here. Now, I'm not doing any super high bit 4K stuff, and if you're going to get into that, I would recommend spending a little more money. But this is a great introduction into a Plex server. And there are other ways to get this up and running with a headless system, but I personally like the way it's set up with Ubuntu here. That way, if I ever want to add more videos or anything like that, I have this full user interface to work with. And not to mention downloading. You can always get your favorite client, BitTorrent client or anything like that, up and running in Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi. But if I wanted to plug in another drive, all I have to do is plug it into a USB port. I can uh, take these, I can transfer them to the micro SD card, I can put more videos in here, and I can do it all on the fly right here. I personally do like the way this is set up. Now, a lot of people are going to be concerned about power consumption because this does need to run all the time if you're going to be using it as a Plex server. But luckily, this is a very low powered unit. At idle, with Ubuntu running and HDMI plugged in, plus that USB drive, I'm only at 5.4 watts, and serving a 1080p video to my Android tablet or my Amazon Fire TV, I see it peak out at 7.6 watts. And all in on this Pi with a hard drive connected, you're not going to see over 15 watts of power usage out of this little board. So if you were worried about the Raspberry Pi 4 running 24-7 and running up your electric bill, I mean, there's really no need to worry. Some older alarm clocks pull more than 5.4 watts. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I definitely recommend giving this a try, especially if this is your first time messing around with the Plex server. This is a great, low-powered, cheap way to get into it. All links for everything I mentioned are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.